Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here. Just want to say welcome and please return again. Um, today we're going to talk about um, seatbelts, basically. And I bought, if you can see here, I bought a three-point harness seatbelt. Now, I'll give you a backstory here. A little bit of a backstory, it's getting close. This is a seatbelt. This one's already been mounted. I started to mount the seatbelt on the driver's side and and I gave it some thought and I was like, you know, I should record this at the same time. So um, that one's in, but it's not in permanently. So here comes the backstory. This is a 1966 VW Bug. As you guys, if you guys have been watching my YouTube channel, you guys would know I've been working on this for a while. Um, Usually on the 66 um, VW Bugs, they have holes here for the seat belts, for the front seat belts. Usually they're on the side here. Um, this doesn't have it because this is a 60, 60s um, chassis here, which has the link pin. The 66 chassis has the ball joint. And I think I, think I mentioned that in another video about suspension and everything else. So... I bought these three point um, seat belts because I wanted to get something that's more secure other than a lap belt. And when you take your headliner off, so as you can see here, there's a hole right here. It's 716 20. It's a fine thread that goes in here. Uh, Volkswagen put this in when they manufactured the car. Uh, I don't know why they didn't add seat belts like the three point for the shoulder belt. I don't know why they didn't add it then. But all they had back then in 66, they used the lap belts. So um, you don't have to take off your headliner to get to this uh, hole here. You just have to fill your way through and then use like a razor blade in the X mark and try to find the threads in this. And usually the threads are clean. Um, the later bugs end up having started using the three-point harness and they put like a thread in here so you can attach like a retractable uh, seat belt or just a regular seat belt that you just have to adjust yourself. So that's what it means by the three point. Um, one here on the tunnel, one would be here and above here. That's the three point. And I'm probably going to do the same for the back. If you can see here, there's a black plug right there. That's another place for a seatbelt. Then you add a seatbelt here. That'll be like your um, lap belt. But then if you look back up here, there's another hole. You can add a third point. So there's going to be a three-point seatbelt back here as well. I guess kind of overkill, but how people will probably say, oh, it's a Volkswagen. What's the three point harness going to do you? What's better than having just a lap belt? That's, that's what I say, but you guys do whatever you want. So I already installed that one over there. I'm going to show you how I'm going to install it over here. Okay, first we're going to be looking at the actual seatbelt. Itself. This is the three point. Uh, I got this from Seatbelt uh, Solutions. Um, I think it's called Seatbelt Plus online. Um, this is the part number I have there. Again, they're not a sponsor. I just want to showcase this because uh, it's a really good product. Brand new Seatbelt, retractable. So we'll take it out of the package. Okay, so it's retracted here. As you can see, um, this is just the cover that uh, just covers the whole mechanism and locks in place. And um, it has to be vertical for it to really work. You can't have this off to the side because there's a, there's a weight in here that uh, acts as a brake. So there has to be a vertical. So in, just in case of like an impact, it locks it in place. But if it's off to the side like this, it's not gonna really work. The weight doesn't really stop it very well. I can feel it getting loose. So it doesn't do a very good job. It has to be vertical. And they show you that on their website. 
Okay, and then it does come for the rest of it, the lap. Um, I guess I didn't show that earlier, but it is over here. I did put one there, that's where that's at. So I got that, and then I got a harness kit, and we're gonna open that up too and show you what's in it. Uh, I recommend always getting a harness kit with this because this harness kit is kind of universal for any older car. Uh, back in the 60s, they all didn't have seat belts then. Go way back in the 50s and earlier, they didn't have seat belts. So, but these harnesses, I'm sorry, these kits are meant to install these type of seat belts in older cars. So I'm going to open it up. So it comes with two huge fender washers. As you know, back in the day, that was the only way to hook up lap belts and Volkswagens that didn't have seat belts. I'm gonna grab my calipers and I'll gonna show you the thickness of these here. Okay. So these, I don't know, this is going to be a little bit wonky. I'll have to do it upside down. <laughs> I might have to turn this camera all the way around. But the thickness is on this guy here. You see it? It's like 0 .9, 0 0.196, which is pretty thick. Uh, it's more than uh, 3 16ths, which is great. Same thing on this side. Says 196. There's certain ways these get installed uh, because they're a bent sheet metal or a bent metal itself. Uh, you can't install. You can install these incorrectly. So there's a certain way to do it. Um, I'm sure there's uh, some kind of analysis that was done to use these properly. And on the website, it'll show you give an example of how they get installed. Um, we're not going to use these. I made up my own washers, as you can see, since I got my calipers out. Again, it's going to be upside down again. These are how thick? 0 0.082. And they are like, let's see how, where they are. They're about two and a half inches in diameter. Okay. So... Two and a half inches in diameter. I am not going to use these. The more surface area you can have, the better. You get into an accident, you want to be able to have the washer pull a lot of on the surface area of the pan using the surface area of the washer. So, since I'm not going to be using this, I want to get the equivalent surface area of another plate. And I'll show you that here in one second. I made up my own plate here. This is a uh, mild steel plate. As you can see, it's a little smaller than this guy. But I have the same surface area here as I do with the washer. And here we go. Here's some calculations to figure it out. Okay, now that I bored you, um, let's measure this plate out. So I believe this is a quarter inch. It's a little bit more thicker because of the paint. And this is inch and a half wide. Yep, inch and a half wide by by three and a quarter. So with the calculations, you know it's the same surface area here. And this is much thicker. This is a quarter inch versus the 0.08, whatever this was. But this is much beefier. Now, either you can kind of, several ways you can attach this. I'm just gonna attach it with a, with a lock washer and a nut. Some people, they add screws to here, like screw holes 
to mount it to the floor pan, you can do that. Um, that way it stays stationary. You don't have to. Or some people put a stitch weld around this onto the floor pan. Um, that's how you would mount it underneath. Um, you can do that too. Or you can have a weld nut on top of this, then stitch it, stitch weld it to the floor pan. Um, you can do that. There's many ways you can do it. The biggest thing is to make sure you have the thickness underneath here. This, it seems kind of flimsy to me. It's kind of thin material. Anyway, that's enough of me babbling. Let's get to it. All right, so we're gonna start off with this angle here, this bracket or brace. As you can see, this one, this leg is shorter than this leg. So this is the leg that's gonna be on the pan. This upper one is gonna be attached to the actual seatbelt mechanism. And you'll see why I do that because, let me give you an example here. I put a bolt in here, put another bolt in here. These are kind of close together, okay? And when you have the mechanism that's sitting in here, it gets kind of bulky, it kind of sticks out. It's hard to get to this here. So it's better to have this hole a lot further up. That way you have more access to this bolt and this bolt. It gets kind of bulky. So let's put it together and I'll show you. So I'm taking the shorter bolt. It's gonna go through here. Now, either you can put it this way or this way, but on my case, uh, I'll show you why I'm putting it in this way, because the lack of room, and you'll see why in here in a second. Um, now I'm gonna take this angle, and we'll put this on top of here. Just make sure it's the long leg. Just like that. For now, I'm just gonna add a nut. I'm not going to screw it all the way on because I need to add this. And this takes a longer bolt. You see how the clearance is? It's really tight up against that nut. So that's installed there. So I'm going to thread this through for now. And there you have it. So it's this bolt can't really, I mean, you can try your hardest to get it out, but it's not gonna come out. And it's gonna hit up against the housing there. You can see it uh, hits up against the housing, so it doesn't come out. And you want the long one to be here because you have several items you have to go through. The floor pan and your washer and your lock washer and your nut. So that's why this one's long here. All right. So now that we have this set up the way we want, I'm gonna grab a 716th S20, which actually, this is this what these are. That's what you use at the top. You can see the one over here. I already put one in there, over there. And it just makes life easier once you install that. Okay, I'm gonna need to install the 716th, uh, this bolt that I had. Um, so, I'm gonna take this cover off. Comes right out. Don't forget the bushing that came out. The bushing came out. So you have this bushing, right? It stays in there. This bushing is meant to for this thing to rock back and forth easily. But do you remember the bushing I showed you earlier? You're gonna use this in here. And what this does, it'll go in here. So when you go to tighten this whole thing at the top. The, where the post is at the top on the A-pillar. Um, this doesn't tighten so much where you this whole mechanism or this whole this whole brace does not move. So let's show you what I mean. Install this. Okay, I got that started. And the threads may need to be cleaned a little bit, but that's how that goes. So let me drop you down for a second and let me 
get some tools and try to tighten that more. As you can see, it's, it's tightened all the way. Uh, you do have a little bit of room here to play with. And you also have to remember, you're gonna have a headliner in here. It's gonna give it some thickness. So you wanna have enough clearance for the headliner. So this is the first part. You can do that. Oh, actually adding that uh, angle bracket was the first part. This is the second part to ease up your pain because this keeps everything out of the way. Okay, so I took a small piece of wood here. <clears throat> and what this is gonna do, is gonna simulate the kick panels that go back here. Now make sure you have your rear seat belt brace back here before you start cutting any holes for anything because you wanna make sure that you have enough clearance for this belt here. Now this belt can't be riding up on anything really. It needs to be free and clear of any kind of metal, anything sharp, because the belt will rip and fail. And you don't want that. So I'm going to install this guy. This guy's gonna simulate the kick panel. And if you don't know what the kick panels, I'm talking about the kick panels that are here. Um, of course this car doesn't have it in here right now. This will be it. So I'm gonna need to put this, there's a groove underneath here that the kick panel lies in. I'm gonna put this in that groove. And I want to get it as level as possible. Okay, we are leveled here. Okay, so now that we're leveled here, I'm gonna take This guy right here needs to be an eighth inch away from here. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. Then I'm gonna mark, it's hard to see. I set the whole seat belt mechanism here with the angle bracket attached to it. And what I did was I put this here and made sure I was an eighth inch off this face and this face here. And I kind of put in a line on the bottom here. That's the line I put in where the angle will be sitting. I took this angle right there and then I marked the top of here, this ledge, where I need to cut out a little bit of a notch. Now, not too much I need to cut out because this bolt hits up against See here, it hits up against the heater channel. So you can't take out too much. So again, the more I get it over to this post, the better. Just because of the foot room. So you can see I already marked it up where I want to cut it out. So I'm going to notch out this area here. Let's get to cutting. Okay, let's see how this is gonna look. Pretty cool. So, right up against, well not up against it, but you have some clearance. I'd say about an eighth inch before we hit the heater channel here. So we have about an eighth inch, no problem there. Uh, this is gonna be sitting flush on this panel there, as you can see. So I'm going to mark where the angle sits here. Yeah. That. Move the bolt, line it up with the marks that I installed. Okay, there's my hole. I'm gonna use my center punch. It's in the middle. Just like that. I'm gonna drill like a half inch hole. Sorry, not a half inch hole. Um, this is 12 millimeter right here. This is like a pyramid bit. Works pretty well. Um, so. Oh. 
vacuum it out. That's the way that's gonna sit, so let's put it all together. And that's basically it. If you can see what that looks like, get closer in. That's how it's gonna be mounted. So now the mechanism is gonna sit here very nicely. Uh, it's gonna be away from this heat. As you can see, it gets, it's gonna sit here like that. So this is really not gonna be in the way. It's gonna, be, it's gonna blow heat a little bit on here, but not to the point where it's gonna damage it. So it should be fine. All right, so the way this is gonna be installed, we're gonna leave this in. We're gonna slide this bolt on like that. And then we're gonna stick it in this hole on the bottom here. Just to see if it fits. And it looks looking good, double checking. Um, yeah, we're about an eighth inch away. Eighth inch away from this guy right here. Pretty good. Even if you're up against it, it's no big deal. If you hit up against it, fine. You just don't want to go any further where this belt starts to ride on this brace here. So, I'm gonna take this out. And we have to add this point here. We have to add this, this part of the seat belt. So the way that works is, see how it's beveled? If you can see how it's beveled. The bevel piece, um, this piece lays flat on top of this bracket here. So let me put that in before I forget. So it lays in here just like this. This goes on top. Oh, my hands are in the way. I'm gonna go underneath the car to add a nut and that plate. Okay hey guys, I'm gonna add this plate, lock washer. So, goes right underneath here. As you can see that guy will sit in there very nicely. So I'm gonna paint over this again, even though it's already coated. All right, so now we just have one more hole to do. One more hole. Well, I hope you can see this. Um, top post. Top post is in. No problems there. The buckle's here. It's kind of hard to see the whole thing in perspective. But um, this bottom piece is in. I told you I would get a closer look. I'll show you. You can see how that's set up. This has the bolt. This beveled here kind of leans up against the L bracket here. So this really doesn't move at all. So you want to tighten off this whole unit down. So that's how that looks. And now, if I go to bring this across, this is fastened here at the bottom, along with the mechanism. And your seat will sit here and this will go across your chest and this will go across your lap. All that's left, again, we have to do is Add the hole on the other side, about right there. So I'll show you, I already did this side already. See that, I'm just gonna measure from that. Okay, so I put my simulated kick panel here, it's level. I'm gonna measure from that face over. So we're looking at uh, 10 to 5 eighths here, and that's where I'm gonna drill the hole on the other side. So. Gotta grab my simulated kick panel. Okay, we're gonna measure or install our simulated kick panel. Okay, I'm gonna mark the 10 5 8s. Which will be right about here. Kinda hard to see, but it's right there. And then, I'm gonna kinda like go in the middle between this space and this area here. So, I'm gonna measure that out. 
it measures about two and a quarter here, almost two and a half. So I think I'm gonna go like, hmm, inch and a quarter. That's what I'll do. It's just there. I know that's not the right calculation that's in your head, guys, but. That's where that's gonna sit. If you're not 100% sure, just lay the plate on top. Seems to be right to me. Punch. Right in the center. There's your hole. I can stick on this part of the lap belt again with the bevel. This needs to be on the bottom, like this. It'll sit like this across your lap. So we'll put a bolt in it. Of course, the long bolt will go in there. Right? And then underneath, we're gonna add this guy, a lock washer and nut, as you've seen what I did before. I don't think I need to show you guys that again. But let's get an overhead look. See how close these uh, bolts are, or these these two here. I say they're really close, right on the money. I know it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but up here it looks like they're right on. Let's see here if I can bolt, not bolt, but clamp these two together. Sorry, I'm already screwing up already. The way this gets clamped together like this, just like that. And this will go across your lap, just go across your chest, and this will be mounted, as like we said before, to there. So I would show you with the seat in, but the seat right now is getting cleaned up. So that's what we're looking at, just like that. So hopefully this was helpful. I haven't seen many videos on installing these type of three point um, belts anywhere. So I figured I'd just show you guys how I do it. Um, there's a lot of adjustment here if you need to. Um, if you need to make this smaller, you can um, just pull it that way. So there's lots, lots of versatility in this whole setup. And it does come with a Wolfsburg logo that gets uh, glued onto here. It's got adhesive and you just stick it on here. So just keep that in mind. Um, other than that, that's how it's done. Now, these seat belts, including one on the driver, it's going to stay temporarily right now. So I'm going to use the lock washers for now. I think later on, once it's installed permanently, once I have the sound insulation in, the carpet in, then I can install these mounts um, for the seat belts permanently. And I'm gonna use a Loctite for that instead of the lock washers. Now the lock washers, um, my experience, they can rattle loose and something like um, seat belts, I really don't want that to happen. I may even go to the point where I may just add a little spot weld to the bolt and nut where it never comes out or spins off. And I can always cut the spot weld out. But anyway, you guys do whatever you want to do. You can mount these however you want to. It's your car, you do whatever you want. Just make sure you're being safe about it. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Uh, do as what they suggest and you should be just fine. Okay? Well guys, uh, thank you for tuning in and Watch me fumble a little bit and talk my head off, but I appreciate you being here. Please uh, subscribe, like, and comment, and let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any other ideas. And if I haven't already said it, have a good day.